Okay, so this is the Euclidean geometry, it's fairly simple. Now let's see, so I mentioned here we can just add on as many coordinates as we like. Let's just write down a more sort of concise expression for this ds squared. So I mentioned here we could have potentially added on as many more coordinates as we are dealing with. Let's now see a more concise way of writing down this line element expression using something called the metric. So if you've watched any of my videos on topology or tensors, you might have seen or heard about the metric and the metric tensor before. Don't worry if you haven't, I'm going to briefly explain what it is now. Okay, so the metric is a tensor. Don't worry if you're not too familiar with the idea of what a tensor is. Hopefully it will become more clear as I introduce more examples, but I would encourage you to go look at some of my other videos yeah, explaining what tensors are. And now the metric tensor we use to define the line element in the following way. So we have that the, the line element squared, ds squared, is now this new object which is the metric tensor. This is just the metric tensor components right now. They have two indices indicating this is a rank 2 tensor or they're two lower indices, so it's a rank 0, 2 tensor, if you know what that means. And now these, essentially it's just a big, well it's a matrix, because it's got two indices, and it's just a big matrix of components, we'll see what they represent shortly. And now this is a tensor, so we need to write its basis, and I said it's a 0, 2 tensor, so it's going to use the one form basis, like this. Okay, so this expression, which I've written here, if it means nothing to you, don't panic. I would encourage you to go and watch some of my other videos about tensors and one forms. But now what I've essentially written here is just the definition of a metric tensor. We could, if we like, just call this ds squared g. And just say this is the object, the metric tensor. And now the definition here is essentially just the expansion of the metric tensor in the coordinate basis. We have our dx, which are the basis one forms, and then we have our g mu nu, which are components. So this thing, of course, we're using the Einstein summation convention. If we have a lower and an upper index, that's summed. So this expression is just a big kind of list, starting with g nor naught, dx naught, tensor product with dx naught and so on with all the other components and now don't worry if the appearance of the tensor product is throwing you off I'm just putting it there for full um, formality we usually like to omit it and we can just instead write this as dx naught squared squared the squared is really just meaning, okay, put a tensor product symbol between these two one forms. Okay, so now we see, looking at this expansion, which I've started to write here, we have ds squared, matching it up with this expression now. So we have that ds squared is equal to g naught naught, so that's just going to be some number, it's just a single component of the tensor, dx and now naught just referencing the component, squared. So if we look over here now, that's our dx squared piece. We can realize that, okay, well that means in this expression we should just say, well, g naught naught, that number is just gonna be one when we match these expressions. So what I've written here is just a, now a really concise way of writing this same expression if we essentially now are given a matrix of numbers or components, we can then just plug them into this expression and work out what the line element is going to be based on that matrix of components. So in the really simple case which I'm showing here, this matrix of components, g mu nu, is just simply going to be the identity matrix. So all of the diagonal components, g 
G0-0, G1-1, they're all going to be just equal to 1, and then any off-diagonal component is going to be 0. And then when we just perform this sum expansion, it's essentially just going to give us a formula that says dx squared is dx squared plus dy squared, blah, blah, blah. So there's nothing actually new that's happened. All I've done is just rewritten the line element in a conciser way using this kind of tensor notation. And we're essentially now just realizing that we can express all of the important information about the geometry with these metric components. Because, well, all of the important geometric information is contained in this line element. It defines the distances between points in our geometry. We can boil all of that important information down just into a single matrix of components, and then we always know that we can extract the, li the line element using this formula. Okay, so we'll just make a few now more extra comments about the metric that so I, I won't get in any trouble from any mathematicians. We need to remember that the metric has to be symmetric. So essentially, if we write down, well, in the case we have here, we don't need to worry because we just only have diagonal components. But if we could, in principle, come up with a slightly more exotic metric that, say, might have non-zero off-diagonal components, we have to make sure that they are symmetric. So the G01 component has to be equal to the G10 component. And then there are also a few other conditions the metric has to satisfy. It has to be what's known as positive definite, which essentially means that all of the, or essentially that um, you could never have a distance which comes out as being negative. So that obviously that seems kind of fairly intuitive, and even just from what we've written here, we've got ds squared. ds squared is proportional to these g mu nu components. We could never, if these are real numbers, we could never get a negative value over here. So that's what's so having this positive definiteness condition is sometimes known as, or a metric that satisfies this positive definity is sometimes known as a Riemannian or Riemannian metric. But as we move to relativity, we're going to start considering not Riemannian, but pseudo-Riemannian or Lorentzian metrics, in which we're going to see we can actually have this ds squared being negative. And that's actually going to then correspond to our physical distances, our dx's. They're going to be imaginary distances. So I'll talk a lot more about this in the next video when we introduce as Lorentzian geometry. But for now, in Euclidean geometry, we just have positive definiteness, and we're always our metric components are always real and positive. Okay, so I'll just summarise what I've gone over today. We we're talking about just now not space time, just a simple space, RD, and we're now looking at the geometry of that space by introducing an object known as the line element. Now the line element essentially just defines distances in our geometry that could be a potentially arbitrary assignment, but we do the assignment using this kind of interval and Pythagorean method. And this essentially defines distances in our geometry, or by defining them, it assigns a real concrete number value to our intervals and distances. And then we saw how we can go from finite intervals, delta s, to the infinitesimal interval, ds, just fairly naively replacing delta with d. And that gives us this definition of this infinitesimal line element. And then I'll introduce you to the concept of the metric, or the metric tensor, which is just a, a way of kind of concisely defining this line element using a 0-2 tensor, essentially representing the, the line element coefficients, if you like, as the components of this tensor. And so essentially when we evaluate this expression, we perform the uh, expansion using the sum convention, we just returned the line element expression where our metric tensor components are giving the numbers which come between these the axes. So in the case of Euclidean geometry, the metric tensor components are just all trivial, they're just equal to one. 
as we're going to see as we move into special relativity, it's going to be fairly similar, and they are going to be still trivial, except we're now going to realise that one of these components, or not necessarily one, but just, there's going to be a difference in sign between some of the components. One component is going to have a minus sign, and that's going to have drastic consequences for the geometry, as we're going to see shortly. And now, just for full generality, as we're going to move beyond special relativity and into general relativity, this expression is probably going to be our favourite expression to work with, as it's going to essentially deal with all of our... This expression is going to become very familiar to us as we're going to um, explore more general metrics, where this, these metric components are no longer just constant numbers, and they could be entire functions, or functions even of the coordinates, and we're going to see that this is going to produce much more non-trivial geometric structures than just this kind of fairly simple Euclidean geometry that we've introduced here.